Section 24 of Scenes in Europe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Scenes in Europe for the Amusement and Instruction of Little Terry at Home Travelers by Isaac Taylor. Holland. 67. The Flat Country the kingdom of the netherlands now includes all that used to be called holland and the low countries the general face of which is extremely flat without a mountain in it the land indeed was once overflowed by the sea and the rivers but by great labor in making banks or dikes they keep the rivers within bounds and prevent the sea from entering they have thus a country for which nature has done little all that exists is the work of art and shows what may be effected if people will try from the top of a high steeple you may see a vast way one flat wide plain studded with cities and villages and cut across in every direction with canals which are indeed the high roads for travelling the lowness of the land and the abundance of the water make the atmosphere foggy and damp so that everything moulds rusts and rots very fast but this as it obliges them to scour and clean frequently has given to the whole country a great air of neatness this is producing good out of evil the gentler people in all european countries dress much alike it is among the peasantry one sees the specific differences the dutch boors show their peculiarities in a striking manner both sexes wear an enormous quantity of clothing two or three waistcoats and coat and trousers as they are usually rather short this thickness of drapery makes them exceedingly clumsy a young girl in her holiday suit would appear to us rather queer short thick with petticoats only half down the leg no waist a small round face covered with a hat almost a yard across like a canopy we like our own country girls better especially when they dress with neatness and do not try to be fine sixty eight skating to market a country so full of water and cut in every direction with canals affords easy travelling in summer by their boats and in winter by skating from many miles distance do the girls come to market with a basket of poultry or eggs on their heads skating with great dexterity all the way sledges are pushed by men or drawn by horses with great ease and at a rapid rate over the frozen hard snow and the ice at market our maiden will be in a trice pack up the poultry close and warm hang the small basket fast on her arm put in the bag with the new-laid eggs near fear she will keep them all safe on her legs it is but a dozen or twenty miles without any hedges or clambering stiles swinging her body from side to side balancing well is her coquetry pride see on one foot what a way she goes now like a dart the other she throws trails a thin line in her path so white now i declare she has got out of sight sixty nine the trek schutz passengers and goods travel by water in the summer season in large covered barges drawn by horses at a steady dull pace of about three miles an hour each passenger can carry his own provisions now shut up in the cabin full of people with every one smoking a pipe and no one uttering a single word in conversation nor stirring from his seat except to light his pipe afresh this for several hours together must be dull enough this is their trek schutz end of section twenty four Section 25 of Scenes in Europe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Scenes in Europe for the Amusement and Instruction of Little Terry at Home Travelers by Isaac Taylor. France. 1. 70. Church of Notre Dame at Paris so we have got into france how should i like to see it only they all speak french there and i can't speak french yet is france a fine country yes a very fine country 
not all one flat like holland and flanders but hills and dales and woods and rivers with many fine noblemen's castles and in the south of france vineyards covering all the hills from which they make wine and brandy the people are all gay fiddling though they are poor and dancing for all their wooden shoes and paris that is a large city and a fine city paris is to france the same that london is to england the capital and where the king lives and all the concerns of government are carried on there are many fine buildings and grand palaces the river seine runs through it across which are many bridges but it is not half so wide as the thames nor can they show anything like waterloo bridge nor can shipping come up from the sea as they do in london one of the grandest churches is the cathedral of notre dame seventy one the catacombs the houses of paris are chiefly built of stone which stone is dug from a considerable depth underground in quarries which pass beneath great part of the city in digging out the stone they made great hollow caverns and as they did not always leave enough to prop up the roof of those caverns it has sometimes given way and the houses in the street above have fallen in of late years an important use has been made of these caverns as the churchyards are but small and the continual interment has increased the number of bones to an enormous and troublesome amount it was resolved to remove them all into these caverns where they are deposited in some sort of regularity and where there is room to deposit them for many ages you may go some miles in different directions among long passages winding various ways and opening into chambers great and small all lined with bones and skulls sometimes piled up in fanciful figures as altars monuments trophies or placed in long horizontal lines the bones of more than three millions of human beings are there closely piled up not each skeleton by itself but a wall of long thigh bones in front behind which lie the smaller ones and rows of skulls upon all as slow i pace this drear abode of death i fancy all alive these quiet bones as once in health all gay their vital breath wasting in idle busy frolic tones ah little did they think how all would end when youth and beauty at the toilet plied when passion warmed the lover or the friend or birth or riches heaved the breast with pride to gain those bones that ghastly skull to press on a warm bosom once was ten years strife full many a kiss and many a fond caress from parent partner children sweetened life to gain them now who wishes they appall we turn disgusted from them bare and brown the friends who love them best now mingled fall crossing or clattering fixed or mouldering down i muse on them nay on myself i muse thus shall i quiet rest in death's embrace so rot the flesh beyond the grave my views brighten with sacred hope if saved by grace seventy two massacre of st bartholomew's day true religion persuades false religion forces this is fully exemplified by the atrocious massacre of st bartholomew's day when sixty thousand protestants were put to death in different parts of france the young prince of navarre and the prince of conde only being exempted from the general doom on condition that they should change their religion this massacre was chiefly conducted by the duke of guise the royal guards were ordered to be under arms at the close of the day the ringing of a bell was the signal and the catholic citizens who had been secretly prepared by their leaders for such a scene zealously seconded the rage of the soldiery the king himself charles the ninth inciting their fury by firing upon the fugitives from his window and frequently crying kill kill End of section 25section twenty six of scenes in europe this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org 
recording by betty b scenes in europe for the amusement and instruction of little tarry at home travellers by isaac taylor france two seventy three the vineyards it is in the centre and south of france and in the autumn season that you see what france is then all is joy and gaiety and frolic when the vine yields its luxuriance and the vintage is gathered with an hilarity which reaches to the least and lowest among them in that warm climate there is no need to nail the vines up against the sides of the house as with us they grow in the open fields the sides of their hills are covered with them planted very close to each other and each vine trained up a strong stake by which it is supported and between which they can easily go to dress and prune them and gather the grapes the fruit is pulled into baskets and carried home in wagons ornamented with vine leaves where it is made into the rich wines so famous in many countries claret burgundy champagne etc seventy four dancing nothing shows the national character or thoughtlessness and gaiety more plainly than the continual propensity to dancing which actuates all ranks in the higher circles dukes and duchesses dance in the champs elysees of paris on public festivals shopkeepers of all sorts workmen milliners and servant wenches form groups of nimble dancers many of whom show an exactitude and agility which would not disgrace the opera and in all the towns and villages on every occasion their good spirits in spite of poverty and in total forgetfulness of misery urge them to dance as if the nimble toe drove away every care come with the fiddle and play us a tune or two lasses and lads bring your dancing shoes here on the green is the light of the moon for you none but the lazy or lame can refuse jig it with tweedledum let frolic wheedle em, making anxiety laugh as she views come little annette with tresses all curling bright sporting and frisking like lambkin or kid foot it so sprightly and dance it all down aright never for languor shall annette be chid ogling leeringly toyingly fearingly jokingly laughingly just as your bid see there is lubin and javotte already there hark tis the fife and the jerked tambourine mother and grandad are sitting all steady there smiling and nodding enjoying the scene they will delighted be while all benighted we dance in the moonlight that checkers the green see from the village a troop of fresh frolickers each with a garland of roses so sweet spite of rheumatics and megrims and colickers we drive diseases away with our feet right hand and left again round about set amain health and hilarity revel complete farewell to misery poverty sorrowing while we've a fiddle we gaily will dance supper we've none nor can we go a borrowing dance and forget is the fashion of france long live gay jollity tis a good quality caper all sing all and laugh all and prance seventy five the wolves there is no enjoyment but has some evil connected with it true all is gay in the vintage season but in the winter in the neighbourhood of the alps especially the wolves come sometimes in great numbers prowling for prey the flocks are devastated by them the shepherds themselves devoured many young children are carried off and when sorely pressed by hunger the wolves will even dig into the graves and tear up the dead End of section 26section 27 of scenes in europe this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by betty b scenes in europe for the amusement and instruction of little tarry at home travelers by isaac taylor spain 76 the bullfight we are come now to spain which is a warmer country than france abounding with hills mountains and fine valleys yet it is not half cultivated as the people are very indolent and very proud and of course very poor 
the warmth of the summer scorches the plains they are then obliged to drive their flocks up into the mountainous parts to obtain grass where they continue till the heats are over the people are very stately the hidalgos or gentlemen however poor will do nothing a large cloak and a sword mark their gentility and often hide their poverty at the same time when they walk their pace is very slow but in the middle of the day they will not stir and often take breakfast and supper in bed the soil of spain is in many places fruitful so as to foster their indolence by producing much with little trouble would they cultivate their lands well it would nobly repay their toil but a spaniard hates toil so he must remain poor and dependent upon other nations for they have no manufactures the politer people are very fond of a diversion peculiar to spain their bullfights young gentlemen love to exhibit their courage and adroitness by encountering these fierce and powerful creatures sometimes on foot sometimes on horseback when the combatant wishes to kill the bull he flings his cloak over the creature's horns then approaching him with a short dagger stabs him on one particular part in the neck when he instantly falls and dies seventy seven burning heretics popery appears in spain in its vilest form the people are very ignorant and that gives an opportunity to the priests to domineer over them a court called the inquisition is established there composed of priests whose professed object is to search for heretics and destroy them they call us protestants heretics and all who will not submit to be kept in ignorance and be let blindfolded by them sometimes they get a number of jews or protestants and sometimes they are only such as are rich or against whom they have any spite these after a mock trial they condemn for heresy and then burn them alive they dress the poor wretches up in caps and coats painted with devils and flames and make them walk two and two to the place of execution this they call an auto de fe or an act of faith but surely it is the devil sets them on to do this jesus christ came to save men's lives not to destroy them they who would persecute for religion have no warrant from christ to do so seventy eight columbus going out there was a time when the countries we call america were not known to the nations of europe christopher columbus was determined to find out whether there were any lands on the farther side of the atlantic ocean and having obtained a ship from the queen of spain he set sail for his adventurous voyage steering straight across an unknown sea with a courage perseverance and skill which may well make his name famous at last he found some of the west indian isles and by degrees the whole of north and south america was found out thus a new world was added to us by his sagacity skill and determinate bravery when he set out from spain his scheme was ridiculed by all as a mad project now any common sailor can make the voyage hail to thee mighty mind columbus hail thy self-taught genius spreads the daring sail tracked thy adventurous way o'er seas unknown startled old ocean on his distant throne found other climes and lands and people strange and gave from europe knowledge in exchange in vain wept alexander to obtain another world thy better skill could gain by tears and blood he won his hateful fame thy gains were peaceful and beloved thy name yet superstitious saw and lust of power an avarice ruined all in evil hour End of section 27section 28 of scenes in europe this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by greg giordano scenes in europe for the amusement and instruction of little tarried at home travellers by isaac taylor chapter twenty eight portugal seventy nine illuminated images and saints portugal is like a slice cut out of spain 
yet is by no means so fine a country. It is under the dominion of popery and the Inquisition in much the same manner. It abounds with Jews who profess to be papists, and thus serve idols in a foreign land, as God threatened them by Moses. Great penury is felt by the peasantry, and the genteeler classes are as proud as the Spaniards. The connection of England with Portugal is close, as it could not maintain itself against Spain without our assistance. It is a great wine country. All the genuine red port comes from thence. Oporto, a seaport in Portugal, is famous for red port. Lisbon is the capital city, the seat of government, where the grandees chiefly live, and principal merchants. A city remarkable for dirt and the filth left about the streets. In wet weather, you will be drenched by the water spouts from the house tops, or sink into the heaps of dung which lie in the way. At night, walking must be hazardous, as the city is not lighted as London is. But to compensate this, there is at almost every corner some image of a saint set up, and before this a light is kept burning all night. This affords some light to passengers, but the real attention of it is, that the superstitious people may kneel down and pray to the saint whom they suppose to have great interest in heaven eighty threshing corn by oxen the common people of portugal are a hardy race simple and obliging but far behind in the arts and enjoyments of life their cars are very clumsy things drawn by two oxen and their corn is trodden out of the straw by driving oxen repeatedly over it. The women ride on horseback with their left hand towards the horse's head. 81. Earthquake at Lisbon Lisbon, the grand city of Portugal, has been frequently visited by earthquakes. The last and most terrible one was on November 1, 1755, when 70,000 of the inhabitants were destroyed by it. What ail the birds! They flutter in a fright, the lowing oxen flee, they know not where. The heat is suffocating, dense, though bright, the lurid atmosphere, unsightly fair. No cooling breezes fan the loaded, stagnant air. Hark, what's that rumbling noise, so loud, so deep? No thunders roll, no clouds obscure the sky. Again it bellows, with an awful sweep. Beneath the ground it groans, slow comes it nigh, And nigher now it howls, convulsive nature's sigh. How the house trembles, heaves, and sinks again, With dread vibration opening every door. The alarmed inhabitants flock out to main, To squares and fields, the hurrying inmates pour. Ah, what a crash was there! Walls, steeples, totter o'er. That frightful chasm six peopled streets divide, Engulfed the rent-crushed habitations lie. Here a sulphuric pool, its swelling tide, Pours bubbling, fetid, horrid to the eye, Drowns what escaped the crash, bidding its thousands die. See frantic mothers fixed, refuse to go, Their husbands vainly strive some wreck to save. In midnight darkness flee, and meet their woe. Ruin involves the fair, the rich, the brave. Another rolling crash, half Lisbon finds a grave. End of section 28 Recording by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Section 29 of Scenes in Europe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. Scenes in Europe for the amusement and instruction of little tarry at home travellers by isaac taylor chapter twenty nine england returning 
eighty two land's end huzzah my boys old england forever there it is there's the land's end and that is the land's beginning to us hail to thee land beloved no land so dear that naked rocks charming to me appear behind their craggy tops broad valleys lie glowing with golden harvests o'er the eye delighted wonders o'er thy hillocks green where cots and flocks to dot the view are seen rough are thy rocks but steadfast like thy men undaunted constant firm the same again the fierce atlantic vainly dashes here in scorn rebutted by these ramparts dear in scorn rebutted by these ramparts drear the idle spray adorns thy dripping sides as ocean backward rolls his foiled tides eighty three seeing london again look there cochi is not that london and there's st paul's i declare come up my jolly nags gallop away we soon shall arrive all safe and alive i at my dinner and you at your hay see what a heaviness smother and smoke hang o'er the city sure tis a pity the good people there must be ready to choke how monstrously long from beginning to end but churches and steeples and chimneys and peoples one would think all the nation their houses must send i long to get into it such wonders to see the bridge waterloo and the monument too and famous st paul's a fine pennyworth to me eighty four the father's fireside so father mother sister see your own lost harry here i be o'er many a sea and many a land i've travelled sailed and here i stand yet never was in distant clime so far as to forget the time when last we parted nor this hour of happy meeting let the power of love repressed now bursting find by eye and hand and mouth and mind tis your own harry come at last to hold his home and inmates fast my tour my travels yes i'll tell from first to last it ends so well i think if twere a book twould sell the end End of section twenty nine. Recording by Greg Giordano, Newport Ritchie, Florida. End of Scenes in Europe for the Amusement and Instruction of Little Tarry at Home Travelers by Isaac Taylor.